Amen. Thank you. Uh, thank you for that. Hey, listen, I know, uh, by the way, my name is Matthew. If I haven't met you, one of the pastors here at Christ City, welcome. Uh, glad you're here. Um, it is good to, uh, to remember and to celebrate just five years. I know we sort of, you know, if you weren't here last week, you missed out on the ice cream truck. Um, apparently, uh, we got the report from the ice cream man. Y'all ate a lot of ice cream. Yo, what's up? I mean, great. Praise God. Happy birthday, Christ City. Um, but it is good to see. Sometimes I think we get so kind of locked in to just our, our work and our ministry here in this little corner of the DMV, and we forget the ways that God has pinballed this church around uh, the country and around the world. And so it is good for us to take a, a bit of a time and, and just to hear blessings and celebrations from those that we do have connections with, and that's just a small sampling of it. And so, church, I, I know that sometimes the, the pastors and elders, like, they're a bit more kind of alerted to the ways that Christ City has sort of radiating effects um, in, uh, in the city and around the world. But just I want you as members of Christ City to know that this is also your work, too, uh, that you likewise are connected to works of justice and inclusion around the country and works of justice and development and mission around the world. And so uh, I'm honored to be uh, among your number and to be here. Um, this morning, we're actually going to begin a, a new sermon series called Practice Makes Progress. Um, and what we want to do over the course of the next few weeks is we want to focus um, on our anchoring uh, spiritual practices as a church. Um, those practices are worship and community and mission. Those are kind of the three anchoring practices, and I mean practices in the way that one might practice law or practice medicine or practice judo or something, I don't know, like, you, you know, you never sort of arrive, like you're always sort of learning and, and working it out. Now, here's the deal. Here's how we're going to do this. Each week for the next three weeks, we're going to have, you're going to have two preachers, okay? Uh, and they're going to focus on one of these practices. So when we get to worship, Jocelyn and Justin are going to lead out and they're going to kind of tag team uh, preach that. And then when we get to community, Andrea and uh, Lisa are going to, they're going to kind of collectively uh, preach on that. But today, you get starters. All right, what's up? Me and Nikki. So, you know, we want to make sure y'all stick around for the rest of the series, so they're going to roast us from the, from the rest of the week's on now, Nikki. Uh, we're going to focus on, on, on mission. And I want to kind of asterisk something real quick. Some of you may remember, if you've been uh, tracking with us for a bit, um, right after Easter, earlier this year, we did a series called Living the Resurrection. And in that series, what we did is we focused on our, on our core values. If, if, if over the next three weeks, we'll focus on our core practices. In that series, we focused on our core values. And those values include justice and inclusion and presence and prayer and creativity. There's five of them. And you kind of think through, okay, what's the, what is the um, intersection between these core values and these core practices? Well, it's maybe to explain it like this. Each of the core values, they find expression in these core practices. So in worship, for example, as we worship both communally on this space and in this time on Sunday, but also individually in our, in our private um, lives and as we move about, our worship is informed by our values of, for example, prayer and creativity and justice. We worship, that our worship gets animated by those values. Likewise, community. As small groups start up, that's one of the chief expressions of community for us, but community is informed by presence and prayer and inclusion so that, so that as we live in community, you begin to see these values find expression. Mission, mission marinades in justice and prayers and creativity and presence. So if you haven't had a chance or if you need a refresher, I, I would really encourage you to go back and give those a listen as we walk through these, these uh, core practices. Because these practices are central to how we behave as a community of faith. This week, uh, this morning, I want us to, we're going to focus on mission. And I want to just sort of briefly say what uh, we don't mean and what we do mean. What we don't mean when we talk about mission, like sometimes if you've grown up in church, you may think of mission and sort of have this idea of, you know, like obnoxious mission trips where large groups of people all wearing the same shirts go and invade some city. And it sort of looks like tourism, but then they do service projects. Some of them are kind of mangled at times. And you like, and they're like, oh, we're on mission. You're like, ah, I'm not sure. Did Jesus and disciples wear the same, like drip and then kind of do like is that how that happened or you think of mission like something is over there like it's not something that happens here but it's like like way far like not nowhere 
where I'm not. That's mission. Or activities, or the, 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 the harsher and, and more um, just tragic side of what mission is when it ran parallel to colonialism. And the ways that, that genocide and uh, just all manners of violence were done under the banner of Christ and some nation's flag. What we do mean, um, and I just pulled this off of uh, Divine Revelation, known as our new website. <laughs> if you haven't seen it, yo, it, it's slick. Check it out. It's new. I want to champion uh, Andrea and Melody for their hard work. When we talk about mission, this is how we've, this is how we've expressed it and articulated it. Mission, proclaiming with our words and our actions the good news of life in Christ wherever we go and wherever we stay. When we talk about mission, this is what we're we're meaning. We're talking about words and actions. We're talking about the good news of Christ. It's called the gospel in the Bible. Wherever you go, wherever you stay. A couple of quick stories about places far away. Some of you know that um, my uh, son Elias and I, we just got back from Peru. Did a, a father-son trip, rite of passage trip. We worked with um, uh, one of our uh, partners there, Paz de Esperanza, uh, Nina Bamaceda, who was on, the, who was on the, the video there. Two folks that we met there. One guy I met, his name is Marcel. Marcel, French-Canadian, but if you saw him, like when I saw him, I thought, yo, my guy is like living out of a van in, like, San Diego, living off of, like, mushrooms and kombucha. Like, I don't know. Like, that's just, like, whatever you imagine when I said that, that's Marcel. Marcel turns out he's a Wycliffe Bible translator. He's a Hebrew scholar. He's been working with a team of uh, uh, pastors and theologians in Peru to translate the Bible into one version of the Quechua language because they have the New Testament, but they don't have the Old I was talking to Marcel. I'm like, so, so what are you like? So what are you doing? He says, Well, I, I'll be trekking. It's going to take me a little bit to get up to where they are because you know they're it's the Andean Mountains and it's not easy. So we'll get over there. We'll take a boat and then we'll just kind of walk in because I want them to have as much access to the scriptures as possible. And right now they don't have it all. So there's a team that's working there. I said, Well, what like so? But like, what do you do? And he said, Well, here's what I've been thinking about. We're going to start with Proverbs, and I've been thinking about this thing that happens in the Proverbs where there's, there's like these parallel th- pieces of wisdom where it says this, and then it says this other thing, but this other thing is just like a, a, like a, a repeat of the previous piece of wisdom, it's, but it's like a, you know, synonyms. And what do I do if I get to the language and they don't actually have a synonym for that? And I got to think, do I, just, do I just say the same thing again? Do I conflate it? And I'll lose the poetry, but but I might communicate the message. And he spent, and he's spending like months thinking about this. And I don't know if you've ever been around somebody that like thinks about one single thing for a long period of time. Beautiful people, a little quirky. That's my guy. It's Marcel. Other person that we met was Ida. Ida is not French Canadian. She's Peruvian. She lives up in the hills surrounding the city of Huanuco. Uh, Ida has been, um, she is a survivor of uh, violence and tragedy that's frankly just a bit unspeakable. But what she's doing now, she's working with other victims of violence and human trafficking and help bringing the oppressors to justice. She's hardcore, man, because she knows that the power of the gospel has liberating and healing forces. And so what Ida does is she just kind of moves out through her little barrio, and she's on the hunt. Somebody's not acting right. Something happens. She's like, hey, yo, what's, what's going on, little sister? Like, let me help you out. And she ministers to them. She, feel, she figures out the stories, works with lawyers, begins to feed them information as they find uh, uh, evidence so that they can send those that have uh, are wronged and that are violating people, they can send them to, to, to jail and so that the, her community can flourish. Both of them are on mission. Wherever they go, or wherever they stay, in their words and in their actions. Mission comes from this Latin word that just means missio, and it just means sent ones. Mission as practiced at Christ City means that we live into our identities as sent ones by the Holy Spirit. 
that we are ones that, that we live into our calling and our commission as sent ones. That's what it says in the, in, in the, on our website, wherever we go or wherever we stay, this is echoes of Matthew 28 that we just read in verse 19 where it says, therefore go. Now listen, I, I've done, you know, I'm not like Marcel, I'm not a Hebrew scholar, but I have read this in Greek, Hebrew, Aramaic, and all, and go, in all of those languages, it means go. The, 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 to, to get a little more into it, it's, it's an aorist, passive participle, which it doesn't mean like just one time go, but it actually means as you go. It's the root word that we have for living, as you live around, as you walk around, as you do your thing. That is what Jesus is communicating when he says go. As you go, as you live your life, it's not a special or sequestered activity, but rather it is the ordinary everyday life. You're sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life, as it says in Romans 12 of the message. That's what Jesus is saying. Not as you go on this one episodic adventure, but just as you live your life. Living as a sent one, as you are going, as you are living, we must all remember our sentness. But it's words and actions. We are to proclaim with our words and our actions. Now, I want to say, um, particularly, I think, with our context, sort of missions as words, it comes with a, with, a, with a bit of baggage. It comes with baggage for me. Maybe I'll just own it and just say that sometimes it can it, it come across as like this is something that's coercive or manipulative or part of the colonial task, especially post-15th century. But I want to uh, quote one of my actually high school classmates who was a pastor and theologian in Colorado, Brandon Washington, African-American pastor, when he says Christianity was born at the nexus of Asia and Africa and Europe, the second century saw it grow into a tri-continental religion. Christianity entered Africa through Africans and was spread by Africans for 14 centuries before colonialism. We could talk about Tertullian, Cyril of Alexandria, Athanasius, even Augustine. They were all continental Africans, people of color, who shaped Christian theology and culture. We could do that, but we don't have to go beyond the Bible to find an Ethiopian convert on his way home with a new understanding of Christ, embodying his sentness. This is our faith tradition, saints. From its earliest moments, those that encountered Christ and began following Christ, they viewed themselves as sent ones. As those on mission, they executed their sentness through word and deed, God's message of invitation and healing. It was always meant to be seen and to be heard, proclaimed and sung and preached and prayed with our mouths. And it was always meant to be displayed in acts of compassion and justice and protest and above all love. And there can be a tension between sort of word and deed. Do we do one or do we do the other as though it's a zero-sum game? And I recognize that some of our faith traditions have preferenced one over the other. And in doing so, we have, we have mangled and misshapen our, 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 our discipleship. Some places are like only verbal. In other places, no, you just, you know, just, just do the deeds and folks might figure it out. But our gospel proclamation it must include our whole lives the things that we do and the things that we say as filipina theologian and journalist and author melba maguey would write our evangelism our our bearing witness is not just a testimony to god's acts in christ but it is participation in those acts it's why we preach and we protest. It's why we admonish with hymns and psalms and spiritual songs, even as we advocate for justice, word and deed. Lest we find ourselves telling the good news of Christ to those who cannot hear us over the grumblings of their own stomachs or the cries of their own children. But mission is also telling the good news of life in Christ, wherever we go, wherever we stay. It's the good news. It's the evangelion. It's the, it's the gospel that propels us in mission. It's this, this story that God takes all of our lives, our, our lives that are beautiful and broken, our lives that feel guilty and glorious, that our lives that the world has placed shame upon, but God wants to bestow honor upon. 
It, it, it's this good news that there has been an exchange because of Jesus and what God now says to all of us in this moment. The gospel message to us is welcome home. Is welcome home. It's the triune God saying to you, I've been waiting for you. I've got space for you. We are sent once to say that and display that. Welcome home. Nikki. Good morning. morning. Y'all know I'm black and I grew up in a black church. Y'all got to talk back. Good morning. morning. Amen. My name is Nikki, and I serve as the Minister of Youth, Families, and Community Engagement. Um, I get to pastor the awesome children at this church because they are awesome. I'm originally from Alabama, um, and I had a lot going on when Justin told me (laughs) I had to preach. (laughs) Um, This morning, I uh, got back from the Teen City Volunteer Retreat. Um, Yesterday morning, I got up to finish my sermon and could not find it on my laptop. They literally were up with me at 11 p.m. last night being missional to literally get me through today. So y'all give the Teen City leaders a hand clap. Okay, y'all ready? What is an asset? Just around the room, what's an asset? Something good you have, okay? As value, one more. What's an asset? Okay. An asset uses a noun as a useful or valuable thing, person, or quality. Do you know that you're an asset to God and the church? Do you know that you have God-given gifts inside of you that are extremely valuable to this church, your neighborhood, and your workplace? If not, I'm here to let you know that you are valuable and you have gifts to offer. We are on a mission here at Christ City to see the joy and beauty in our world. We acknowledge it in the handiwork of Christ, the creator, the sustainer, and the liberator of the world. Where we see brokenness in our world and in our lives, we cry out to Christ, the one who is working to renew all things and restore all things. Through Christ, humanity is rescued and the wrong things in this world are set right. That was a lot, huh? How do we get this done as a church? By sharing the love of Christ and utilizing our God-given gifts towards the mission stated above. We can do mission in different ways. How can we do mission? Words and actions. Serving others. I'm not getting anything from this side of the room. Prayer, Prayer. good job. When I was 10 or 11 years old, I was outside playing basketball with one of my friends. And there was a drive-by shooting one street over. My friend ran towards his house, and I was literally in shock and just stood there. And there were two people lying on the ground, fighting for their lives. My mom ran out of the house, and she ran to me and said, let's get in the house. And I told her, I don't want to leave them. She said, well, we can't go closer, but we can stand here and pray. And so we did. I'm a preacher's kid and grew up in a charismatic black church. One thing we could do was pray. Um, I remember praying over the boys until the ambulance pulled up to work on their bodies. They both passed away. And I think about that a few times a month, living in D.C. with all of this violence happening around us. That, that moment was monumental. It was a missional moment that I would later understand of I'm making my mission daily to pray over the children in this church, in this school, and in this community, daily. Yeah, so prayer is one of the assets that God has given us towards mission. Everybody say utilize. Utilize, utilize is God-given asset. I'm going to hit you with a few more stories. Um, So 
uh, an awesome couple in our, our church, Sam and Kent, were pregnant with their first child. And I did get, is that okay to tell the story? <laughs> I think Sam was about a month out when she went into early labor with Timmy. And they were not prepared for his arrival. I was at Drea's for dinner, and I said, oh, I got a missed call from Sam. And Drea said, so do I. Oh, my God. We were like, oh, something's wrong. We called her back. She explained to us that they didn't really have anything for Timmy. She was in early labor. Kent was on the way on the metro somewhere. Um, and then by the time Sam and Kent got home, um, they had everything they just about needed for Timmy. This was the missional work of the church, the internal church, putting their resources together, using their assets, financially uh, sustain, like whatever else, you know. <laughs> using multiple streams of their assets to make sure that this family was okay and had everything that they needed. Mm -hmm. and, and Sam will say to this day, how blessed her family was by the mission. Mm -hmm. How, <laughs> yeah, amen. How we love each other well and how she saw the work of God through their church family is the missional part of making sure Timmy, who's now two, had everything he needs. Today, again, we're talking about the mission. And how are you utilizing your assets for the mission here at Christ City? You and your gifts are a treasure to Christ. The church needs and wants you to bring all of your assets into the storehouse. What's the storehouse? Anybody know? Mm -hmm. A storehouse is a building used for storing goods and your assets are a, gift from, are a gift that God has given you to use towards the mission of this church, your neighborhood, your workplace, wherever you go. Use your gifts for the glory of God. We can share the good news of life in Christ by our actions. We can do a mission in different ways through prayer and action. We can't always do the tangible things, which I'm learning myself because I always want to go, go, go. But sometimes you need to just sit down and pray and let the Holy Spirit lead you. Oh, and sometimes we need to fast, too. I had to do that, too. <laughs> Our faith is not only meant to be between us and God. It is meant to be lived out in both church and the broader communities we live in. Okay. And this is my last story, and it's my favorite story of Christ City <laughs> on a mission, internal and external, using all the assets and the people. Ready? All right. On August 20th, 2021, during the pandemic, a member of Christ City reached out for a friend asking for transportation for a refugee family flying into a local airport. Fridays are normally our days off, and y'all, I was at the beach, hanging out. <laughs> Got this messenger to my Facebook uh, inbox, and I was like, oh, well, maybe we can help. I was um, in North Carolina with the Bell family when the ask was made, and I was like, Sarah, what do you think? She said, I think this is, this is right. We, uh, <laughs> we decided to put the call all out and ask people in our community to help, and this response was overwhelming. In a good way. My phone and my email blew up with people wanting to help and letting me know that they were praying. We knew the family was going to a particular part of Virginia, and I texted the entire Northern Virginia small group asking them to be on standby. They mobilized very quickly. <laughs> they had warm fruit, groceries, doctors at this, at this Airbnb to check on this family, not to mention that one of the um, women there were 40, was 40 weeks pregnant and flying. I'm like, okay. So they went over, not knowing what they were going to walk into. And then we found the air, out the Airbnb stay was coming to an end. They didn't have anything else lined up for this family. So our staff met on a Sunday. With prayer and in agreement, we decided that we would intervene and help with housing and groceries for this family. <laughs> Soon after, someone reached out to us and let, let us know they had a vacant house and they were praying that they could help refugees resettle. He said, "Where well, there's one thing, it's not furnished. And our members were like, hold my beer. We about to, we about to get this house furnished? 
We about to get these people comfortable. We about to have a baby. Like, let's go. And we did. <laughs> people, <laughs> dude, I knew I could trust in this community to pull their assets together for the missional purposes of the nations coming here. Shout out to Lisa. And not just loving people, not just loving the nations over there. So we got to work. Christ City staffing and a couple of elders were up late planning and organizing. And with the help of so many people, we got it done. I took a step back and I realized this was an answer to prayer. People ran errands, picked up car seats, sent money, drove, overfilled pickup trucks from northwest to southwest while literally praying that things would not fall off. People vacuumed, swiffered, washed dishes, put beds together. Shout out to CJ. <laughs> Used an off day, wiped window seals, made beds, picked up donations, cut the grass, hosted a family for hours when you're an introvert. Thank you, Watson. You called someone even when you wanted to text. You brought friends to help. You greeted a refugee family. Teen City, shout out. You welcome people into your home. We went on grocery runs, and I got to see the work of the missional community. Serving God together as a body, operating in the gifts that God has given us individually and as a community. This, friends, is mission work. This is God's work. This is Christ City's work through mission. Today, the family is doing well, and mom had a healthy baby. He's cute, too. <laughs> like I said last night, the Teen City volunteers sat with me and helped me put the sermon together. One thing that stuck with me is that we need to be mission-minded. Everybody say mission-minded. Mission -minded. And how are we using the Great Commission? Each of us have a different set of gifts to achieve the mission as to achieve this mission as, as members of Christ City. Whatever your gifts you have, whether it be in policy, financial literacy, prayer, working in the health field, use your gifts. Everybody says, use your gifts. Here are some ways we can do that. Y'all ready? All right. We can show the love of Christ by being a church that sees people in the fullness of Christ. This includes our LGBTQ plus siblings, minorities, the unhoused, single people, and persons with disabilities, which I just learned that we should say persons first to acknowledge their humanity. Give time. The service of silence is a much needed thing. We can talk way too much. Sometimes just being a listening ear is so missional for people. Everything I named here is about mission. If you're still confused about your, your gifts that you can offer, there's a thing on your seat called a connection card. Mm -hmm. Christ City is here to help you with your spiritual gifts and to pull out the assets that you have. Take, a, take your connection card and uh, write spiritual gifts on the back, and we can send you some links and walk with you. We can help you figure this out. Because this is for more than just Christ City and this local church. This is about ministry wherever you go, wherever we stay. Mm -hmm. Okay, and then lastly, I'm going to leave you with a quote from a Teen City volunteer. It's Evan. <laughs> <laughs> Evan and a little bit of Jay-Z, right? Okay. <laughs> Our God-given gifts are a missional asset to the church. Who are we to set them aside? When we use our God-given gifts that leaves room for God to open doors for yourself and other people that have learned from you. God bless you. And remember, God is good. And all the time. Amen. If, um, if you didn't hear it, let me just uh, summarize what Nikki said is pray and get your ass set on mission.
How much you? <laughs> so I'm going on vacation after this. I'm going to let y'all know. <laughs> Send any emails. Justin at ChristCityDC.org. <laughs> so the lingering open-ended question that, uh, that, that is put forward to us from Matthew 28 and from Nikki is, how might you live into your sentness? How might you live into it individually? Where are you walking around? Where are you living? Where are you stay? Who is it around you? Whose dignity, whose humanity do you see right around you on either side and front or back that you need to say to them, hey, the good news is welcome home. Where do you need to live into your sentness communally, in your small group with others, in the neighborhood or in the community or at work or where you're at school or wherever it is that you find yourself? Where, how might you live into your sentness in word and in deed? Who or where does the Spirit want you to proclaim with your words and with your life, welcome home? That's the invitation to us, to all of us that are here. You don't have to be, know all the ins and outs of the scripture. You don't have to even be completely certain about where you are with the Lord. But the invitation is still for you to join in the kingdom work right now, where you are, wherever you live and wherever you go and wherever you stay. Here's the thing, though, and, and this is why we come to the communion table at the end of every service, is that you don't do this on your own or under your own power. That's why we gather together here. But you do it under the power of the Holy Spirit that is in you. That's why we come to the table to remember the completed work of Jesus, the body and blood of Christ broken and shed for you, the one that invited us, that told us first, you're my child, welcome home. And then said, now I need for you to go and to tell and to show other people that same message. So Justin and the band, they're going to come out. They're going to continue to lead us in, in um, one last song as we close out the service. And I just want you to, in light of the things that we've shared and the stories that we've shared and the questions that we've deposited into the room and let linger like perfume for you to consider what does it mean for you to live into your sentness. And as you consider that question, to come forward to receive the bread that represents the body of Christ broken for you and the juice that represents the blood of Christ shed for you. That commissioned you as sent ones.